we're here with number 17, Mickey Rivers. Mick, you know, when you came from the Angels, coming into New York, and you had that Figueroa, yep. and all your scenes. Hey, Guado, we had this, uh, the Senor Stopper at the time come with me over here. They come over here with the Yankees to help us win a couple of pennants over here. Not only me, Ed Figueroa, one of the best stoppers we had over here. Everybody forgetting that deal with that trade then. That was the other best half coming over here helping the Yankees win that pennant at that time. Now, talk to me about your relationship with Louis Tian. Oh, oh well, you know, I, I know Louis for a long time, and it was great. He's always been a great competitor, great helping guys out. You know, because we down in Florida, and we get a chance to see each other on a regular basis. He said, you know, I'm going to be playing with the Yankees. I said, no, you're not. And I always tease him, you know. And I so happened to got with the Yankees. Louis was Cleveland. Then he went to Boston. And he said, oh, I'm coming up the bat. And I hit a home run off him. Oh, he had a fit. He had a fit. Oh, the worst guy hit one off me. The worst guy. And that was me. But we always, we always, like I say again, we always friends. All the years, over 30 years, we were friends before, before I started playing. Now, talk to, tell them the story about P. Rose, 76 World Series man. When he came up the line, what did he tell you? Oh, he come and said, kid, hit the ball the other way. Don't bunt. I'm going to stand right here. He coming up the line, halfway up the line, right in the base, and then stood right there. It kind of starred me for a while, you know, as a young player, you know, and I'm watching the guy come up there, and he wouldn't move. Whatever you did, he said, I ain't going to move. You ain't going to bunt. So I look at the guy, and I say, man, this, this, this team crazy. This team crazy here. But they had, good, they had a great team anyway. Now, finally, you know, everybody talks about that team, that game with Boston. But let's talk about that game when, when Reggie and – and Billy went at it. What were you? What, what, what I was out there. But for me, I think Reggie saw the ball all day good that way, that day. So, you know, I could see the difference. But my key thing, when uh, I think Rice hit the ball down the line, he went low over there, pick it up and then flash it over Willie Head. Maybe that might have been a little different. But for me, I didn't think he saw the ball all day with that, that game right there. So Billy did the right thing, but he been in that motion. But I wouldn't just... Well, we end up winning, but I would I would have did it at that time. Now, can you imagine if you would have been playing today's game with those small ballparks? I don't oh. think they would have ever hit a ball over your head. Oh, uh, not not these. You remember not it was four seventeen, four thirty. They moved it. They moved it in. They moved all the and, fences and, in and stuff like and that. I never saw a ball go over your head. Well, you know, you made promises, you know, but I I learned that Paul Blair was teaching me out there. Let's go shallow. How many balls do you see go over guys' head these days? Not many. Maybe two for a year or something like that. But most balls drop in the front of you. So he made me come in a couple of steps just to be secure on things like that. Hey, my brother, you'll always be number 17, man. They should retire your number, man. And she's, to me, you're a Hall of Famer. If I had a, if I had a team, you'd be my starting center well, field. Thank you. Appreciate that. Be safe, brother. All right.